Okay, so let's see if you have the math skills to solve this interesting little math word problem. Let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. 20% of 64 is equal to 5% of what number? Okay, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator, but if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course we'll walk through step by step how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take uh, one more look at the question before I show you the answer. So 20% of 64 is equal to 5% of what number? Obviously, we're looking for this particular number, and that number happens to be 256. All right, so that is the answer, and uh, hopefully you got this right. And if you did get this right, well, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A+. Plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving percent math word problems. Now percent is a big, big deal, not only in math, but uh, in everyday life. Just think about how often you see this symbol. I mean, uh, really, you just can't go anywhere without seeing this symbol. We'll go to a store, we see this symbol, hey, there's sales off, there's certain percents off. You're watching TV, and they're talking about credit card interest rates, mortgage rates. I mean, if you just kind of really pay attention, uh, we see the percent symbol all day long. So if there's any one thing that you really want to understand in math, well, that is percent. Now, a lot of people think that they understand everything they need to know about percent because they could do a simple problem like maybe 7% of like, say, 60 and that's very good if you can figure out what 70% or 7% of 60 is using a calculator. But actually, there is much more challenging and interesting percent problems. And of course, the one that we're looking at right now happens to be one of these type of problems. And the key to solving in this particular problem uh, is twofold. Now, I'm going to be using algebra to solve this problem. And if you didn't use algebra, that is fantastic. But using algebra uh, really makes things so much easier. So uh, actually, uh, when you do take algebra, you actually still study percent because there's more interesting uh, percent word problems. So that's the first uh, part of this problem. But the second part of this problem involves translating. So what I'm talking about is translating a verbal problem into a mathematical problem. So let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Now, if you figure this out using a different method, or a different technique, that is fantastic. But uh, let's go ahead and, and see how we can use algebra to easily solve this problem. Okay, so first things first, uh, just as a quick reminder, always use the rule of three when you're solving any math word problem. So don't do anything until you read the problem at least three times. Okay, so uh, when we're looking at this problem, really there's a few different parts to it. So first we have 20% of 64. So that's one part. And then we have this statement here, is equal to, and then we have this part of the problem, 5% of what number? Okay, so it's like this problem has two little pieces to it, and in fact, it does. Now, if you look at this part, 20% of 64, well, we should be able to figure this out. 20% of 64 is basically, uh, you know, calculating this, 20% of 64. Now, because we're able to use our calculators, we should be able to actually get this number. So let's get this number first, and then we'll move on to uh, uh, you know the next steps that we need to take to figure this out. All right, so if you can't figure out what 20% of 64 is, well, you're not going to be able to figure out the next step. So let's go ahead and calculate that out. So 20% of 64. All right, so how do we find the percent of a number? Well, this is so, so easy. All we're going to do is change this percent to a decimal and then multiply it by the number. Okay, so how do we change a percent to a decimal? Easy, we're going to divide by 100. That's what you do. Now, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube, Math Man, why do that? Just move the decimal point over two places to the left, 
and in D, that's the same thing. So 20% or 20.0%, if we move the decimal point over two places to the left, well, that is the decimal equivalent of that percent. But um, when you move the decimal point over two places to the left, just uh, so you understand, that is the result of dividing by 100. Okay, so 20%, again, as a decimal is 0 0.20, and then we're just simply going to multiply by this number. So 0 0.20 times 64, using our calculator, is 12.8. So this part of the problem right here, 20% of 64, uh, we could just kind of get rid of that and put in a 12.8. All right, so we're just going to, again, approach this problem, you know, one segment at a time. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. So we have 20% of 64, and now we know that that is 12.8. So we could just kind of rewrite this problem. 12.8 is equal to 5% of what number? All right, so you can see here that I have some things written down, and I'm going to go ahead and give you a chance to take a look at what I just wrote right here and see if you can kind of figure out why I wrote what you know why I wrote this. In other words, uh, I'm kind of giving you the answer, but can you kind of reverse engineer and figure out why I just did this? All right, well, hopefully you can, and let's go ahead and talk about it right now. So the first thing that we want to notice is this word, is. Anytime you see is in a math word problem, that is the equal sign. And here it's really, really clear, too, because it says is equal to. So this part of the problem, well, you know, what comes before is equal to, is going to be equal, literally equal. Uh, so we could put an equal sign in to, uh, or between this part of the problem and this part of the problem, which is 5% of what number? Now, we don't know this number. Okay, we're like, well, what number are we talking about here? Well, because we don't know the number, we can uh, uh, kind of establish a variable like x. Now, this is where we're going to be using algebra. Because we don't know the number, well, let's let this uh, symbol represent that number. Variables just represent numbers. Now, you know, we don't want to overcomplicate you know, algebra. So when you see an x or a y or a z, these are nothing more than numbers. So let's have some sort of variable. We'll use x to represent the number that we're looking for. But uh, if we want to find 5% of this number, what do we need to do? Well, let's go back and just quickly review. Okay, so remember 20% of 64. Well, what happens if we want to find 5% of x? Okay, now x again is some number. So how do we do this? Well, we just kind of review this, right? So we're going to take this percent. We're going to uh, make it into or going to uh, convert it into a decimal or write it as a decimal and then we're going to multiply that decimal by x so this is basically what we need to do here so let's go back to this tra uh, this part of the problem where we're translating all right so 20 percent of 64 we already know is 12.8 is equal to five percent of what number so it's five percent of x all right but uh, right here we're going to actually have to uh, change this uh, percent into a decimal and then multiply by this variable and we're going to end up with a lovely algebraic equation to solve okay so hopefully you kind of see where this is going so let's go ahead and do that right now all right so 12.8 is equal to five percent of x so go ahead and write this as a decimal and then multiply it by x and come up with your new equation of course, when you have that equation, try to solve that equation. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you like the way I just kind of sneak that in? Well, listen, uh, I definitely need your help, okay? I'm not afraid to ask for help, and you shouldn't be afraid to ask for help, especially if you are struggling in mathematics. Now, who should you ask for help? Well, you know, the first thing is if you happen to be a math student, always go to your teacher first, right? Even if you don't like your teacher, if you're like, I don't want my teacher doesn't teach well, whatever the case is, you want to always have a good rapport with your teacher. So go to your teacher and say, hey, listen, can you look at my work? You know, this is what, you know, I don't understand. Or can you tell me what I don't understand? So uh, your teacher is a great resource. So always go there. Now, if you need uh, more help beyond what your teacher is able to help you with, well, then you can use videos like this but uh, really, if you want my best work, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description below. So anyways, get the help you need to succeed in math because you absolutely can. But for me to succeed on YouTube, and basically that means for me, 
reaching as many people as I possibly can to teach the math. I need people like yourself to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. So here we have 12.8 uh, uh, 12.8 is equal to 5% of what number? So what we want to do here is solve for this number x. Okay, so kind of giving you uh, the same clue over and over on what we need to do. We need to change this percent into a decimal. So we're going to uh, take 5, divide by 100, or move the decimal point over 5.0%. Uh, two places to the left, so we're going to get 0 0.05, and we're going to multiply it by this number. So now we have a new equation. 12.8 uh, is equal to 0.05x. Okay, so algebraically, 0.05 times x is the same thing as 0.05x. So now let's go ahead and focus on solving for x. All right, so this is actually pretty easy. There's only one step to do here, and that is divide both sides of the equation by 0.05. So let's go ahead and calculate 12.8 uh, divided by 0 0.05 because 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05 is 1x or x. So when we do that, 12.8 divided by 0 0.05 is going to be 256, which of course is our answer. Okay, so again, a lot of you uh, may have uh, been able to solve this problem without algebra, but why, you know, uh, kind of, um, you know, avoid algebra? I guess that's what I want to say. You know, algebra is a tool. And uh, there's just certain problems uh, in mathematics or that you, you absolutely need algebra to solve. You know, problems like this, though, you know, you could kind of reason through and maybe through some trial and error you know, or some other creative uh, method uh, be able to come up with the answer. But if you truly want to uh, learn math and grow your math skills to, you know, solve more challenging problems, well, you're going to need new tools, which include, obviously, algebra. All right, now for some, uh, some of you out there that uh, are not in school, if you happen to be a math student in school, this is kind of stuff that you will learn in pre-algebra or algebra one. You'll find the links to those courses in the description. But uh, for some of you out there that just want a quick review of math, well, I actually have two great options for you. So the first is my math foundations course. That's just a quick review of basic math to include percent. But if you want to take it a step further and learn basic math and then some algebra, geometry, and some other things as well, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course. This is a perfect skill to refurbish all those math skills that you lost maybe uh, multiple decades ago, maybe the 1970s, 1960s, whatever the case might be. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.